Uh, there's a lot of people at Berkeley that are interested with working with the PR2. The team leads at Berkeley are uh, Peter Abiel, Rosina Baichi, Trevor Darrell, Ken Goldberg, Bjorn Hartman, Michael Jordan, Dan Klein, Jatender Malik, Stuart Russell, and Claire Tomlin. And so the main themes that we're uh, interested in working on here are hierarchical planning, perception, uh, manipulation of deformable objects, and learning from demonstration. And so I'll start with hierarchical planning. And so uh, over the course of a lifetime, a human chooses about 20 trillion primitive motor commands, and they do a pretty good job of that. But you don't really uh, try to figure out the perfect sequence of motor commands when you want to program a robot or write a paper. Uh, you do that at a much higher level. And so you want to do the same thing with the PR2, obviously. And when you do that, it's important to uh, build the overall system such that things are properly connected. So when you issue a high-level plan, you want to make sure that you can actually execute the low-level commands to carry out that task. And similarly, you'd want to be able to prune out the high-level plans that are suboptimal in some way or impossible to carry out with low-level tasks. So recently, we've, we've been able to develop a method that lets us prune these high-level plans that are provably suboptimal and commit to plans that we can prove are good enough. And so here's an example of that. Um, so the, t the, the overall task here is there's four bottles, and we want to move them into different regions on the table or to this other thing in the back. And so these are the target regions for each bottle coming up. Last summer, Jason Wolf interned here, and he got this working on the PR2. So you'll see the robot here taking each bottle and putting it into the target regions that were marked on the last slide. The next uh, main goal for us is perception, and we're focusing on visual object recognition, pose regression for grasping, and detecting people. So an example of the work we're doing uh, in visual object recognition is uh, handling transparent objects. And those are hard because the image patches containing uh, transparent objects are dominated by the background. So this causes the typical methods for object detection to fail. Um, so using an LDA method on gradient statistics, such as uh, SIFT or hog descriptors, we can detect these objects reliably. When choosing grasp points, people generally use either a model-based approach or an image-based approach. Um, approaches based on 3D models, uh, they can work well, but they're fragile if the models aren't very good. And recent methods uh, choose grasp points based on, on local features and 2D images. We'd kind of like to get the, boast, uh, the best of both worlds here. Uh, so right now, image-based methods use uh, local patches with limited information about the actual object. And having intermediate representation that takes the object into account and how you want to grasp it into account seems like it should really help get better results. Um, for example, you might have an image of a mug where you can't actually see the handle very well, but you can still recognize that it's a mug. So if you're going to use the local 2D uh, image features, you might not try to grasp it from the handle, but if you know that it's a mug, you can either go and get a better look of the handle or reason about how to grasp the handle anyways. Detecting people, um, that's hard because People can be in lots of different poses and wearing lots of different clothes, and it just makes them look really different. Um, so we plan to use an approach based on uh, discriminative parts called poselets. The key idea is to choose the salient parts by selecting patches from training images, um, and we're going to annotate those with key points such as joints, eyes, noses, ears, and so on. And then you're going to align those patches so that the local configuration of the key points is the same for all patches for the same poselet. So for, your, for everything the label is eyes or some other poselet, you're going to align them all. And what that results in, it, that results in is poselets that are trained to detect frontal faces or, side, or profile faces or head and shoulders patterns or legs or, or so on. And they're not really based on anatomy, but rather any important configuration. So for example, uh, a valid poselet would be a left hand next to a hip in a front-facing pose. And so you're going to uh, group poselet activations that agree in their predictions together, and that's going to give you a full hypothesis for the presence and boundary of a person. So although uh, rigid objects are kind of already hard enough to manipulate, um, they're still deformable objects, and they're everywhere, and we still want to be able to deal with those as well. And they pose some additional challenges that you don't deal with with rigid objects, uh, particularly the fact that they have really high dimensional configuration spaces. 
So this makes perceiving them and manipulating them very different from the methods they use for rigid objects. So there's lots of problems that need to be solved here, but we're focusing on uh, looking at developing a set of primitives that can be combined to perform uh, more useful higher level tasks. So for example, if you can detect the corners uh, of a piece of cloth or a towel, and you can trace edges, that pretty much allows you to fold a towel. After that, everything is, very, is fairly simple. And so we're seeing what needs to be added to this set of primitives to handle more complicated objects, such as t-shirts, and more complicated tasks. Uh, some of you may have seen this before, but here are some uh, preliminary results of that. Uh, the video here is sped up 100 times. <laughs> And so it can, these are all unseen towels, and you can fold them all and put them in a stack. And I'll skip ahead. So the last uh, main focus that we have is learning from demonstration. So uh, programming robots is time consuming, and it can often be faster to just provide a demonstration of a task rather than explicitly programming a robot to perform the task. And sometimes it's not even really clear how to, to program the robot to do so. So we've developed methods that enabled us to teach a robot dog to cross difficult terrains and autonomous helicopters to perform expert level aerobatics, well beyond the capabilities of any other autonomous helicopter. So we plan to extend these methods and apply them to manipulation. We started working on this in the area of surgical robotics. So it turns out that one of the more tedious tasks for uh, laparoscopic surgery is tying knots. So here's a demo of that. And uh, the resulting trajectory here is both smoother and faster than the provided demonstrations. So uh, in summary, our focus is uh, hierarchical planning, perception, um, manipulating deformable objects, and learning from demonstrations. And if you have any other questions, you can ask any of us that are here. Um, the people here today are Pranav Shah, who's working on uh, planning for manipulation, Hino Song, working on perception, uh, Marco Cusimano Towner and myself, working on deformable objects, and Judy Hoffman and Shervin Javdani, working on learning from demonstration. Um, and that's it, so thanks.